John Franklin Sir John Franklin KCHFRGS, April 16, 1786, June 11, 1847, was a British Royal Navy officer and explorer of the Arctic. Franklin also served as Lieutenant Governor of Van Diemen's Land from 1837 to 1843. He disappeared while on his last expedition, attempting to chart and navigate the Northwest Passage in the North American Arctic. The ice-bound ships were abandoned and the entire crew died, from causes such as starvation, hypothermia, tuberculosis, lead poisoning, zinc deficiency, and scurvy. Biography Early Life Franklin was born in Spilsby, Lincolnshire, on April 16, 1786, the ninth of twelve children born to Hannah Weeks and Willingham Franklin. His father was a merchant descended from a line of country gentlemen while his mother was the daughter of a farmer. One of his brothers later entered the legal profession and eventually became a judge in Madras, another joined the East India Company, while a sister, Sarah, was the mother of Emily Tennyson, wife of Alfred, Lord Tennyson. Educated at King Edward VI Grammar School in Louth, he soon became interested in a career at sea. His father, who intended for Franklin to enter the church or become a businessman, was initially opposed but was reluctantly convinced to allow him to go on a trial voyage on a merchant ship when he was aged 12. His experience of seafaring only confirmed his interest in a career at sea, so in March 1800, Franklin's father secured him a Royal Navy appointment on HMS Polyphemus. Commanded by Captain Lawford, the Polyphemus carried 64 guns and, at the time of Franklin's appointment, was still at sea. He did not join the vessel until the autumn of 1800. Initially serving as a first-class volunteer, Franklin soon saw action in the Battle of Copenhagen in which the Polyphemus participated as part of Horatio Nelson's squadron. An expedition to the coast of Australia aboard HMS Investigator, commanded by Captain Matthew Flinders, followed, with Franklin now a midshipman. He accompanied Captain Nathaniel Dance on the Earl Camden frightening off Admiral Charles de durand Lannoy at the Battle of Pulora in the South China Sea on February 14, 1804. He was present at the Battle of Trafalgar in 1805 aboard HMS Bellerophon. During the War of 1812 against the United States, Franklin, now a lieutenant, served aboard HMS Bedford and was wounded during the Battle of Lake Borneo in December 1814, just prior to the decisive American victory at the Battle of New Orleans one month later. 1819 Coppermine Expedition. In 1819, Franklin was chosen to lead an expedition overland from Hudson Bay to chart the north coast of Canada eastwards from the mouth of the Coppermine River. On his 1819 expedition, Franklin fell into the Hayes River at Robinson Falls and was rescued by a member of his expedition about 90 meters, 98 yards, downstream. Between 1819 and 1822, he lost 11 of the 20 men in his party. Most died of starvation, but there were also at least one murder and suggestions of cannibalism. The survivors were forced to eat lichen and even attempted to eat their own leather boots. This gained Franklin the nickname of the man who ate his boots. 1823, Marriage and Third Arctic Expedition. In 1823, after returning to England, Franklin married the poet Eleanor Ann Porton. Their daughter, Eleanor Isabella, was born the following year. His wife died of tuberculosis in 1825. In 1825, he left for his second Canadian and third Arctic expedition. The goal this time was the mouth of the Mackenzie River from which he would follow the coast westward and possibly meet Frederick William Beachy who would try to sail northeast from the Bering Strait. With him was John Richardson who would follow the coast east from the Mackenzie to the mouth of the Coppermine River. At the same time, William Edward Perry would try to sail west from the Atlantic. Beachy reached Point Barrow and Perry became frozen in 900 miles, 1,400 kilometers, east. At this time, the only known points on the north coast were a hundred or so miles east from the Bering Strait, the mouth of the Mackenzie, Franklin's stretch east of the Copper Mine, and a bit of the Gulf of Boothia which had been seen briefly from land. Dot, supplies were better organized this time, in part because they were managed by Peter Warren Dease of the Hudson's Bay Company, HBC. After reaching the Great Slave Lake using the standard HBC route, Franklin took a reconnaissance strip 1,000 miles 1, kilometers, down the Mackenzie and on August 16, 1825, became the second European to reach its mouth. He erected a flagpole with buried letters for Perry. He returned to winter at Fort Franklin on the Great Bear Lake. The following summer he went downriver and found the ocean frozen. 
He worked his way west for several hundred miles and gave up on August 16, 1826 at Return Reef when he was about 150 miles, 240 kilometers, east of Beachy's Point Barrow. Reaching safety at Fort Franklin on 21 September, he left Fort Franklin on February 20, 1827 and spent the rest of the winter and spring at Fort Chippewyan. He reached Liverpool on 1 September 1827. Richardson's eastward journey was more successful. Franklin's diary from this expedition describes his men playing hockey on the ice of the Great Bear Lake, the modern town of Delaney in the Northwest Territories, built on the site of Fort Franklin, thus considers itself to be one of the birthplaces of the sport. On November 5, 1828, he married Jane Griffin, a friend of his first wife and a seasoned traveler who proved indomitable in the course of their life together. On April 29, 1829, he was knighted by George IV and the same year awarded the first gold medal of the Société de Géographie of France. On January 25, 1836, he was made Knight Commander of the Royal Guelphic Order and a Knight of the Greek Order of the Redeemer. 1837, Lieutenant Governor of Van Diemen's Land Franklin was appointed Lieutenant Governor of Van Diemen's Land in 1837, but was removed from office in 1843. He is remembered by a significant landmark in the center of Hobart, a statue of him dominates the park known as Franklin Square, which was the site of the original government house. On the plinth below the statue appears Tennyson's epitaph. His wife worked to set up a university, which was eventually established in 1890, and a museum, credited to the Royal Society of Tasmania in 1843 under the leadership of her husband. Lady Franklin may have worked to have the lieutenant governor's private botanical gardens, established in 1818, managed as a public resource. Lady Franklin also established a glyptotech in surrounding lands to support it near Hobart, it was her intent to civilize the colony. The village of Franklin, on the Huon River, is named in his honor, as is the Franklin River on the west coast of Tasmania, one of the better-known Tasmanian rivers due to the Franklin Dam controversy. Shortly after leaving his post as governor of Tasmania, Franklin revisited a cairn on Arthur's seat, a small mountain just inside Port Phillip Bay, that he had visited as a midshipman with Captain Matthew Flinders in April 1802. On this trip he was accompanied by Captain Reed of the Briars and Andrew Morrison McRae of Arthur's Seat Station, now known as McRae Homestead. 1845, Northwest Passage Expedition Exploration of the Arctic Coastal Mainland after Franklin's second Arctic expedition had left less than 500 kilometers, 311 miles of unexplored Arctic coastline. The British decided to send a well-equipped Arctic expedition to complete the charting of the Northwest Passage. After Sir James Clark Ross declined an offer to command the expedition, an invitation was extended to Franklin, who accepted despite being 59 years old. A younger man, Captain James Fitzjames, was given command of HMS Erebus and Franklin was named the expedition commander. Captain Francis Crozier, who had commanded HMS Terror during the Ross Antarctic Expedition of 1841 to 1844, was appointed executive officer and commander of Terror. Franklin was given command on February 7, 1845, and received official instructions on May 5, 1845. Erebus and Terror were sturdily built and were outfitted with recent inventions. These included steam engines from the London and Greenwich Railway that enabled the ships to make four knots, 7.4 km per hour, on their own power, a unique combined steam-based heating and distillation system for the comfort of the crew and to provide large quantities of fresh water for the engine's boilers, a mechanism that enabled the iron rudder and propeller to be drawn into iron wells to protect them from damage, ships libraries of more than 1,000 books, and three years worth of conventionally preserved or tin preserved food supplies. Dot unfortunately, the latter was supplied from a cut-rate provisioner who was awarded the contract a few months before the ships were to sail. Though the provisioner's patent process was sound, the haste with which he had prepared thousands of cans of food led to sloppily applied beads of solder on the can's interior edges, allowing lead to leach into the food. Additionally, the water distillation system may have used lead piping and lead soldered joints, which would have produced drinking water with a high lead content. Chosen by the Admiralty, most of the crew were Englishmen, many from Northern England, with a small number of Irishmen and Scotsmen. The Franklin expedition set sail from Greenhithe, England, on May 19, 1845, with a crew of 24 officers and 110 men. The ships traveled north to Aberdeen and the Orkney Isles for supplies. From Scotland, 
the ship sailed to Greenland with HMS Rattler in a transport ship, Barreto Jr. After misjudging the location of Whitefish Bay on Disco Island, the expedition backtracked and finally harbored in that far north outpost to prepare for the rest of their voyage. Five crew members were discharged and sent home on the Rattler and Barreto Jr., reducing the ship's final crew size to 129. The expedition was last seen by Europeans on July 26, 1845, when Captain Danet of the Whaler Prince of Wales encountered terror and Erebus moored to an iceberg in Lancaster Sound. It is now believed that the expedition wintered on Beachy Island in 1845 to 1846. Terror and Erebus became trapped in ice off King William Island in September 1846 and never sailed again. According to a note later found on that island, Franklin died there on June 11, 1847. To date, the exact location of his grave is unknown. After two years and no word from the expedition, Lady Franklin urged the Admiralty to send a search party. Because the crew carried supplies for three years, the Admiralty waited another year before launching a search and offering a £20,000 reward for finding the expedition. The money in Franklin's fame led to many searches. At one point, ten British and two American ships, USS Advance and USS Rescue, headed for the Arctic. Eventually, more ships and men were lost looking for Franklin than in the expedition itself. Ballads such as Lady Franklin's Lament, commemorating Lady Franklin's search for her lost husband, became popular. In the summer of 1850, expeditions, including three from England as well as one from the United States, joined in the search. They converged off the east coast of Beachy Island, where the first relics of the Franklin expedition were found, including the grave sites of three Franklin expedition crewmen. Many presumed Franklin was still alive, and he was promoted to Rear Admiral of the Blue in October 1852, an example of an unintentional posthumous promotion. In 1854, the Scottish explorer John Ray, while surveying the Boothia Peninsula for the Hudson's Bay Company, discovered the true fate of the Franklin party from talking to Inuit hunters. He was told both ships had become icebound, and the men had tried to reach safety on foot but had succumbed to cold, and some had resorted to cannibalism. Ray's report to the Admiralty was leaked to the press, which led to widespread revulsion in Victorian society, enraged Franklin's widow, and condemned Ray to ignominy. Lady Franklin's efforts to eulogize her husband, with support from the British establishment, led to a further 25 searches over the next four decades, none of which would add much further information of note regarding Franklin and his men, but contributed hugely to the mapping of the Arctic. In the mid-1980s, Owen Beattie, a University of Alberta professor of anthropology, began a 10-year series of scientific studies that showed that the Beachy Island crew had most likely died of pneumonia and perhaps tuberculosis. Toxicological reports indicated that lead poisoning was also a possible factor. In 1997, more than 140 years after his report, Dr. Ray's account was finally vindicated. Blade cut marks on the bones of some of the crew found on King William Island strongly suggested that conditions had become so dire that some crew members resorted to cannibalism. That evidence suggestive of breakage and boiling of bones, characteristic of efforts to extract marrow, was subsequently identified. It appeared from these studies that a combination of bad weather, years locked in ice, poison food, botulism, starvation, and disease including scurvy, had killed everyone in the Franklin party. In October 2009, marine archaeologist Robert Grenner outlined recent discoveries of sheet metal and copper which have been recovered from 19th century Inuit hunting sites. Grenner firmly believes these pieces of metal once belonged to the terror and formed the protective plating of the ship's hull. A quote from the British newspaper The Guardian states, Legacy For years after the loss of the Franklin party, the media of the Victorian era portrayed Franklin as a hero who led his men in the quest for the Northwest Passage. A statue of Franklin in his hometown bears the inscription, Discoverer of the Northwest Passage. Statues of Franklin outside the Athenaeum Club in London and in Tasmania bear similar inscriptions. Franklin has become the eponym of many geographic locales, among them Franklin Island in Antarctica, Franklin Island in Greenland, Franklin Sound north of Tasmania, Franklin Strait in northern Canada, and the Franklin River in Tasmania, as well as many streets and schools. The Australian oceanographic research vessel RV Franklin bears his name as well. The wintering site of Franklin's second Canadian expedition, in Delini, Northwest Territories, was designated a National Historic Site of Canada in 1996.
The explorer was also memorialized when one of Canada's Northwest Territories subdivisions was named the District of Franklin. In 2009, a special service of Thanksgiving was held in the chapel at the Royal Naval College to accompany the rededication of the National Monument to Sir John Franklin. It was a celebration of the contributions made by the United Kingdom in the charting of the Canadian North, and honored the loss of life in the pursuit of geographical discovery. The service also marked the 150th anniversary of Francis McClintock's voyage aboard the Yacht Fox, and that expedition's return to London with news of the tragedy. Rediscovery In September 2014, the wreck of HMS Erebus was rediscovered, and in September 2016 the wreck of HMS Terror was discovered, south of King William Island in Terror Bay and in pristine condition. This is many miles south of the last known location of the Terror. Archaeologists believe the Terror must have been crewed and sailed to its new location, as the anchor was used and it was sailed through a maze of islands and channels. The wrecks are designated as National Historic Sites of Canada, with the precise locations of the designations in abeyance. With the precise locations of the designations in abeyance. With the precise locations of the designations.